Dr. Fizz on four special processes in thermodynamics. The first is the isometric process, one which keeps the volume constant. And let's consider the work in these processes. The work here is zero. Since the change in volume is zero, there is no work. The next process is the isobaric process, one at constant pressure. In a weather map, an isobar is a line that has constant pressure points. And here, if we integrate the pressure uh, with the variable, the volume variable here, we find that since pressure is constant, you can pull it right out of the integral and you get simply the change in volume. So the work for an isobaric process is the pressure times delta V. The next process is, iso, is an isothermal process, one at constant temperature, and on a weather map, an isotherm is a line that has the same temperature along the line. So we integrate here PdV, and since uh, we're going to use an ideal gas formula here, calculate this for the ideal gas law, we replace the P with nRT over V. T is constant. We pull that out with the other constants. We integrate 1 over V. We get the natural logarithm, and at the limits of integration, we get the ratio V2 uh, over you know, V1. And in engineering physics, it's very important when you deal with logs and exponentials that you have a dimensionless quantity. This is a good check that you're doing the math correctly. Here are the volume units will cancel and we'll have a dimensionless number for the natural log. The last process is the adiabatic process. Adiabatic means no heat transfer. Now since heat is not an intrinsic property of the material, we don't say heat is constant. We say there's no heat transfer. Heat doesn't flow in, heat doesn't flow out. When you go on a picnic, you want to keep your food nice and cold. You don't want heat flowing in from the hot summer day into your food, so you look for an adiabatic container some kind of styrofoam or some kind of the container that will keep the heat uh, flow to, to a minimum. So you want to put your picnic goodies in an adiabatic container. Let's look at the change in heat that we looked at earlier in the previous section. The first law of thermodynamics says the change in energy is the change in heat minus PdV, the work done by expansion, which we write in this fashion with the PdV on the right side with the uh, change in energy. And remember that the total energy is 3 halves nRT for the ideal gas. And 3 halves R is the specific heat of constant volume. So delta U is 3 halves R and delta T. But the 3 halves R is in your C sub V. Your N is written explicitly next to it. And you have then delta T and P delta V is still there. Uh, the change in heat when you swap these variables, remember we did the old trick, we can swap the delta over to the P by using the trick delta quantity P times V, your product rule, and since PV is nRT, we had nR delta T minus the case that's swapped from the one that we, we have here. So instead of P delta V, we have V delta P. Uh, you might want to review that from the previous section where we did that nice little trick. Then we can pull out the N and pull out the delta T. We did this earlier in the previous section and get this nice equation. And from there, we uh, note that the constant uh, volume case for the specific heat plus R is the specific heat of constant pressure. So we just replace that, have these nice equations. And we're trying to get a handle here with what does this mysterious adiabatic process mean? You know, delta Q is equal to zero. What does that mean? I need to flush out these regular variables and see what's going on. So I will set delta Q to be zero. And when I set delta Q to be zero, I'll have N C sub V delta T is minus P D V delta V. And here, when delta Q is zero, I'll have N C sub P delta T is plus V delta P. And set up a differential equation now by dividing these equations. Here is one equation. Move that to the numerator here and move this over to the right hand side. So look at that top. That top uh, one is this equation. Divide that by this equation. The left hand side we divide by the left hand side. Right hand side, we divide by the right hand side here. And this ratio, C sub P over C sub V, the ratio of specific heats, constant pressure, constant volume, we let be gamma to clean up our notation. 
and we have here the derivative of the pressure with respect to the volume. So we have a differential equation and this differential equation by separating the variables dp over p is equal to dv over v and minus sign and the gamma is going uh, here going to hit the dv when you bring the dv over and we integrate we integrate we're going to get logarithms natural logarithms here we get the natural log of p and that's equal to minus gamma natural log of v you put the limits of integration in you get then the natural log of the ratio remember the dimensionless quantity we talked about earlier when logs are involved here we see it twice and that means we can bring the minus gamma up into the exponent since when you take the natural log you, you bring you bring that down and we can then set these quantities equal and get p over p2 over p1 is the ratio v2 v1 with the minus gamma and to make the gamma plus we flip the, uh, the, uh, the two volumes and we get our final result which is can be written as P1 P1 here if you cross cross multiply P1 V1 to the gamma is a constant so P1 V1 gamma is equal to P2 V2 gamma uh, you can see that here by just bringing the V2 over here with the P2, the gamma, and bringing the uh, P1 over to the other side. And this is a nice formula to remember. The pressure times the volume to the gamma the power here, the, on, working on the volume, uh, is equal to a constant. For a practice problem, how about if you uh, calculate the work done by a gas in an adiabatic expansion from volume V1 to volume V2? You basically set that up like we did the other one up here, where we uh, replace the pressure with the what the pressure equals, and you know that the pressure is going to equal some constant over v to the gamma power, and you'll be able to do that integral.